many of us know today that India is in its uh, spot on the world stage in, in recent years, which is a, a tremendous transformation from a, a perception of an impoverished, developing country uh, into just recently named as one of the three top destinations for investment uh, in the world. Uh, what, a, what a dramatic uh, shift uh, that has happened in the last 10 to 15 years. And a lot of those <clears throat> uh, key factors to transformation that we have observed is, uh, and most of you are well aware of this, is the uh, liberalization of the policies um, of the government and also the globalization of the marketplace. And like our fellow panelists have mentioned, a very key factor is the level of, fluence, of fluency in, in, in the English language that has really uh, helped uh, elevate that and make it all possible. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and through this um, transformation, uh, IBM has not um, uh, ignored that. And uh, as it watched this trend of transformation, decided to reinvest in India in the mid-90s. And I say reinvest because most of you uh, who have been in India for a been here for a long time, uh, aware, might be aware that um, IBM was, had a very large presence in the computing industry in India. And due to, ironically, government policies uh, and shift in them, in actually 1977 had to pull out of India, leaving a, a very elaborate infrastructure of computing that really caused and created a lot of organic growth opportunities within India as well. But personally, um, I feel it put India back about 10 years from Computing arena at that time. So when they when I say reinvested, they really went back very cautiously, um, partnering with an Indian company, Tata Consulting Services, with a few thousand people in the mid '90s to significant to to where we are today. Some of you may be aware of a significant part of our workforce in India today. Uh, it's a dramatic shift in, in that arena as well. <clears throat> and all of this is uh, tied into. One of IBM's is, um, initiatives called Smarter Planet, where the, the thought process and the vision is to connect trillions of devices with billions of people. And doing this through collaborating through multiple companies worldwide, and India is a very big, significant part of that uh, initiative today <coughs> and going forward. In, um, in my experience of leading entrepreneurial groups, as Shivanti mentioned, uh, worldwide teams, what I've found is the trend is now to um, make, uh, use the Indian resources to create products and services for the Indian marketplace. And then we look to ways, look for ways to bring that, uh, those products and services back into developed countries, add bells and whistles so that the profit picture is uh, a lot better. And so as opposed to creating products for the Developed country market, and then trying to take costs out and sell it in developing countries. So that seems to be the trend um, that, that uh, really <coughs> is taking place right now. So probably a question for most of us here today would be: How can we leverage our ethnicity to tap into this transformation that is happening in India to create entrepreneurial jobs and opportunities in the U.S.? Just, I would pose those questions back to you. Thanks. Thank you so much for um, inviting me and, and really provide, uh, providing a space for art uh, in the midst of intellectual debate and uh, because that's exactly uh, where art always resides even though it's seldom recognized. So thank you. Strong vision of the IAM organizers, thank you. Uh, I've been told that, you know, you cannot go beyond five minutes. So exactly after four, somebody will show me a one minute card. <laughs> there you go. No, you can't show it to me now. <laughs> okay. uh, of course, uh, uh, what the panelists, esteemed panelists uh, have said, uh, it's very clear that exchanges have happened. Exchanges have borne results. Uh, we have, uh, we gain a lot through exchanges. There are certain basics. I mean, we, we have learned from each other. Uh, we, uh, we have benefited from each other. Um, even at the time when there was this height of Cold War, it was a children's theater of, from, chosen from America that went and participated in a children's festival 
uh, in Moscow and Moscow Children's Theatre came and performed in Washington, D.C. Uh, needless to say, all of us in this room know uh, that how Hollywood is trans, trans, transatlantic all over the world, how Shah Rukh Khan makes many women and men hard skip a beat, <laughs> and Amitabh Bachchan is the king. So Bollywood has happened, you know it. Musicians, dancers have exchanged craft. Musicians have gone there, ballet companies have gone there, art artists have come over here, and in Twin Cities, we are very blessed to have such wonderful uh, cultural uh, venue, and we're one of the, is third in the country where arts funding is concerned, and uh, it's a rich cultural exchange. We know that. Stereotypes have been broken, and, uh, and at every concrete step of interaction and cultural exchange, we have learned from each other. So those are the basics of any culture, any exchange, be it economic, be it social, be it political, be it uh, cultural. Uh, so I would like to frame um, uh, the conversation today at a deeper consciousness of uh, sustained growth and exchange of ideas of working together and how do we truly create exchange because I came out of the Guthrie after the after being there for a few years to really create a space where where we wanted to bring together artists from different parts of the world with and our choices were we want to bring together people who are completely different from each other different differing in politics different in religion different in race different in all sort of sexual identification and we wanted to put them in a room. And this is not just the art on stage, it is our board is consciously, consciously chosen to be extremely different from each other, our staff, and, and so therefore automatically our audience. So how do we define, so these are the questions when we got these people together, these are the questions that we asked. That how do you define community? How do we define community in panels like this? These are just provocations for us to ask more questions. How do we truly do so in a deeper consciousness where true collaboration happens? How do we craft work? How do we create a pedagogy which can be the catalyst to provoke thoughtful innovation? We bring in artists from all over the country and they don't agree with each other. Sometimes there's no common language except the language of an intention to truly collaborate and within a certain budget, within a certain amount of time, how we are accountable to create something for which publicity has already been done. You see, the, these, uh, these are the basic essentials with which we create work. So art and artistic consciousness and creativity and imagination provide the space, a safe space to answer or ask these difficult questions. Questions of race, questions of inequity, questions of difference, questions of human rights, questions of religion, war, poverty. How can we truly model democracy? How can we truly participate being conscious of gender equity? How do we, is it possible to create a room without patriarchy? And sitting in a panel with four men is an important question to us. <laughs> uh, we created a program called Imagining Worlds where we brought together artists uh, from India uh, it was an 82-year-old painter called Shanu Lahiri from, uh, from Calcutta and we teamed her up with uh, Takumba Aiken, who is a well-known African-American muralist, uh, Susanna De Palma, um, who is a, was a flamenco uh, dancer, and Indran from Sri Lanka, who was a poet. And we got them together to answer one question, that if you had all the power and if you had all the money, if money was not a concern, what, how do you imagine a world? How do you imagine a world where everybody signature is seen and heard and at the same time everybody else collaborates to create one thing and the Indian kept asking us what is what is the nationality of that point of intersection artists whom we saw today Rani's fantastic dancers and Rita dancers and there are many artists I know who are in this room who, who will be here for more than say another 30 years and when they create their art this diasporic question needs to be asked that when they go to India what nationality will they represent many such questions will be asked and answered when you ask the question thank you my one minute is over <laughs>